Hi everyone. So here I am on the Digital Foundations Wiki. This is a, an online textbook that we'll be using for this class. We're not going to use a lot of the chapters in it, so there's no need to purchase the textbook, but all of the chapters are here. This is chapter one. You can see the chapters listed down here on the left. So chapter one, and I would like for you to read all of this information. You don't have to watch this video yet, but you can watch it if you're stuck on what to do. This is just a little introduction to basic computer functions. This is an example of what exercise one might look like. And this just talks a little bit about how to work with files and folders. I'm asking you to create a folder on your Google Drive and put some files in it. So this language is important. This is the definition of vector versus bitmap. You are uh, going to be doing taking care of those two definitions in your vocabulary terms document. And then this walks you how to create a new file. This walks you through creating a new file in Adobe Illustrator. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is click this link right here in order to download the work of art that I'm going to be asking you to work on today. So it brought us to a link on Flickr.com and I'm going to just click on this. See if I can get a good image from it. And here's the download button down here on the right. So I'll click the download button and then it'll offer me some sizes. I'm going to choose to download the medium sized one. And you can see it put it right down here at the bottom of my screen. I'm not sure how your computer is set up, so I don't know where your downloads go but I will access it in my downloads folder once I go to Adobe Illustrator. So now I'm going to launch Adobe Illustrator. And from here, I'll choose File, Open. I'm going to look for that Egon Schilly painting from the Fauvist art mu movement. There it is in my downloads right there. So I'll open it this way. Just say OK to the RGB profile. And here's the image. Do you see this little square here? That's my artboard, and I need for my artboard to be the same size as this painting. So the first thing I'll do is zoom out a little bit. I can do that by clicking on my zoom tool, pressing my alt key and dragging, or alternatively, I could press control plus or control negative to zoom in and out. I'm gonna ask you to click the artboard tool and set your artboard to be the same size as the painting. There, that's much better. Our next step is to investigate, take a look at the layers. So I'll click my layers palette and I can see here that I have one layer and that layer has this art on it. So I'm gonna click on the words layer one and rename it original art. Then I'm going to lock that layer by clicking right here beside the eyeball. 
and down here I'll create a new layer. On this layer, I'm going to name it My Art. So we have Original Art and My Art. You can see how the layer is blue when I click one time on it. That means it's selected and that means that's where I'm working. Since Original Art is locked, if I try to do anything here on this layer, I can't do it because it's locked. So I'm going to click on the My Art layer. The next thing I need to do is build a palette of colors that matches these colors. So I'll grab my swatches palette. Right now it's empty. I'm going to create a color by clicking my eyedropper tool and clicking somewhere in here. You can see that color that appeared there. So in my swatches palette, I'll just add it by choosing new swatch and OK. There that swatch is right there. I'd like to have about 10 colors, so I'll repeat this process a few times. All right, now I've got about 10 colors, so I'm ready to go back to my layers palette and start work on this. The first thing I want to talk about is how I can simplify this composition. So I'm going to take this large area here and simplify it to just the predominant color. So first I'll click on my rectangle tool and then I'll choose a color. I can do that up here. I want it to be as close to that white as possible, so I'm going to choose this gray color. And then if I click here, I'll be back to my composition. I'm going to draw a box that looks about the same size. I want to make sure it has no stroke. See that red line there? It should have no stroke and the fill color that I'm choosing. Should I go back to that color? I think that's more appropriate. And now, by clicking again on this, I can hover outside one of the corners to rotate it. With my selection tool, I can move it into place. Maybe I'll rotate it just a little more. There, that feels good. So now I'm going to create this square down here. Again, hover outside to rotate. And now I'm going to create the square that I'm assuming is going to be his face. I can choose my color first. And as you can see, this is just a, I'll do a finger while we're talking, this is just a simplification of what was there. One of the shortcuts you can take, I'm going to use my move tool to put this, and I think I'll type command plus and zoom in. So a shortcut you can take is to type simply 
edit copy, that's control C, and edit paste. You can see that's control V. So there's another finger for me. And I'm using my keyboard commands now. But again, this is just a simplification. If you think about the AT&T logo, it's a simplification also. It's a simplification of the globe. Another copy trick is to hold your Alt or Option key while you have the selection tool. Click and drag. So that's just another way of uh, copy and paste. There's so many different ways to achieve things. I'm going to do a little bit more here, but in the video, I'm going to kind of zoom ahead. Let me add one more, one or two more boxes here and one here. You always have to go back and get your selection tool. See the little V there on the tool tip? That means I could type a V and it would bring me back to that tool. So let's zoom out and see what we have so far. A few basic shapes. I want to do more, but before I do more, I want to show you how to look at your composition in the way that it will look to me. So what we'll do is click the original art layer and then add another layer. New layers usually appear above the layer that's been selected. So I'm going to call this layer BG. That stands for background. And then as I look at this whole composition, I would assess the background color as being this dark brown. So I'm going to create a square on the background layer that is that dark brown, exactly the size of my composition. Because it's below my art layer, it will show up below everything on that layer. So now you can see I have my art, the eyeball, will allow you to turn that on or off. I have background, I can turn that on or off. And then I have the original art layer that is locked. So right now, I'm going to turn the background layer off so that I can continue work on my composition. I want to put in some of these dark red. I've got to click on my art layer. I want to put in some of these dark red, dark maroon stripes. So I'm just going to create a few indications that I see that color there. I see a little bit of it here too. Maybe I'll zoom in to see a little bit more of what I'm doing. Now I'll turn on my background layer and zoom out so I can see where I am. In essence, this is the whole assignment. When you complete your assignment, of course, you may want to put in a little more detail. I'm just shortening this for the video. But when you complete your assignment, you will choose File, Save As. Let's name it Dynamic 1 with my initials. I hope you'll do the same thing. Leave it as an Illustrator file and move that file, that Dynamic 1 with your initials, move that Adobe Illustrator file into your Google Drive so that you'll always have it. Then save another copy, export as a JPEG or PNG, either way. I'm going to click export. It's going to go to my downloads folder. And it's that PNG that will get posted for your classmates to see on the discussion board. I'm going to save this video now and post it for you.